Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be playing with white paper scraps in the hopes of giving you some ideas of things that you can do with your white paper scraps because we've all got them haven't we? There's always those bits that get trimmed off and then pushed to the side and sometimes we forget about them and just grab a new sheet of paper but um, they can be great for all sorts of things so I'm going to do something today with them um, as I say, that will hopefully give you some ideas. So I've got my grip mat here and I'm going to cover it or not necessarily cover it, but just use it to hold down a bunch of white paper scraps. And that's all I'm using it for, just holding them down, keeping them still when I'm working on them. If you haven't got a grip mat, you could use a sticky mat or you could tape them down with a bit of masking tape. So the first thing I'm going to do with these scraps is dress them up a bit. I'm going to smush some colour on them. I've got dried marigold distress oxide here and I've added some water. This is my smusher if you want to know how to make a smusher. There is a smusher playlist, which I'll link up in the eye and in the description box. I'm just going to pick up my orangey paint and smush it on. And you can see how taping your paper down or sticking it down to something like a grip mat or a sticky mat can help because it just keeps them still and it helps you to work on lots of paper scraps at the same time. But as I say, it's it's not necessary. You can uh, do it however you want. Next, I'm going to smush some saltwater taffy on top of that. I'm not going to bother drying it because I'm quite happy for the colours to mix and mingle. And of course, if you want to reproduce this on a big sheet of paper rather than scraps, then, you know, do that. It's... Uh, these videos are really just to give you some ideas of things that you can do with your supplies and materials and tools. So I'm going to dry this with my hairdryer but I'm going to try not to be too aggressive because I'm not sure the effect that heat will have on my grip mat. Just going to roll some paper towel over the top to soak up any really deep pools because that will help the drying to be even. Next I'm going to use this stencil to add some saltwater taffy and I'm just going to blend little patches of it here and there trying to make sure each scrap has got a bit so that this pattern will be well distributed. So now I've got this a stitched circle stamp. I'm going to pick it up with an acrylic block and I'm going to stamp with warm lipstick, which is in the same colour family-ish as these colours. And again, I'm going to try and get the stamped image to overlap the breaks here, the, the edges of the scraps, so they get a good distribution. And I've got a smaller stitched circle and I'm going to use spiced marmalade on this one. So I'm using slightly stronger colours for the stamping so it stands out against the colours that I smushed with and stenciled with. I'm going to gently dry this again with my hairdryer because I want to do some heat embossing and I'd like all the ink on there to be as dry as it possibly can be. And this, this is a sort of messy mixed media look. I don't mind if stray bits of embossing powder stick uh, where I haven't planned for them to stick, but I am going to try and minimise that a bit using corn flour just to get rid of any grease and static and 
wet ink. So I've got a grungy mixed media text stamp here, which I'm gonna ink up with embossing ink. And I'm gonna stamp that again so it crosses the borders between the scraps. And just so I can kind of keep track of where I've been with the embossing stamp, I'm going to peel the strips off as I do them and pop them in here ready for heating. So there you go, all my scraps are mixed media I think this is a really lovely activity to do when you're feeling a bit uninspired. If you can't think of a card design, sometimes it can be really frustrating. But if you just play with colour, with stamps, with stencils, with smushing, with embossing, etc. If you just play with your scraps and make something colourful, a design idea might jump out at you as you do so. So already I'm thinking I could cut a square out of this and use that as a panel and put a die cut on top of it. Or I could die cut some hearts out of this or some flowers out of this and do something with those. So, and you can do any colors. You could do a whole rainbow. You could do warm colors like this one, or you could do something with blues and greens or purples and pinks browns, greys, reds, whatever colours you like and you could have these to hand for times when you haven't got a lot of crafty time and you just want something quick to die cut and put on a card you could keep a stack of these coloured white paper scraps and just grab from those so you can do a mixed media card very quickly by doing the mixed media at another time by having it prepared and ready to go so i really like doing this every so often with some paper scraps things i've got left over just throwing some color some shimmer and shine at the paper and then popping it in my pouch of pretties or following my instincts and making a card with it which is what i'm going to do now i think i'm going to make a card so here we have a square frame die and I can pop that on there and just make sure that the text line is parallel to the frame line, which I think it is, or it will be when I stick it down. I hope you don't mind the pitter patter of raindrops on the conservatory roof. I find it quite soothing until there's an absolute downpour and then it gives me a headache and I have to stop crafting. But at the moment, it's quite pleasant. So I'm going to pop that there, stick it down with a bit of washi tape and run it through my die cutting machine. I'm going to pop another piece of card over the front here just to protect that gold heat embossing. So there we go. That's cut the centre out. The frame itself is still in the die. can match that up like that so for a card blank I have got this piece which is a five and a half inches by five and a half inches and that can go on there so I'm going to add some tape runner to the main part the square and put that flat Ooh, hang on we're getting all tangled up And we'll pop that roughly in the middle. Okay, so that's in the middle. Let's get this the right way around. And I want to pop this up on a bit of craft foam. And I think these strips are thin enough to go behind the frame.
So I've got foam on all four sides of the frame and I've peeled back the tape just a little bit on these sides. This one I took off too soon, but we'll forget about that. And I'm going to add this carefully where it needs to go. And then when it's in position, I can press it down and pull the remaining release paper off. This just stops it sticking down too early, hopefully. I'm going to have to put my head in the way, so I'll see you in a minute. So the thing I find with these skinny frame dies is I think the frame bit can sometimes get stretched by the die cutting process. So they don't always match up perfectly when you put them back on, but I think this one looks pretty good. So as we've got some circles on here already, I'm thinking of using this circle wreath die to add something here and then I'm getting butterfly vibes as well. Um, might use this to create a butterfly to sit on there. Um, I'm thinking I shall cut this, die cut this out of some scraps of white card and then heat emboss it with the gold to make it a solid gold that matches that gold. Right, let's give that a go. So there is my white die cut. I've got this embossing dauber which contains embossing ink. So I can quickly add this, just grab my tweezers so I don't get ink all over my fingers. I'm doing on this bit of deli paper because I don't fancy wiping my craft mat right now. <laughs> we'll pop that in the gold embossing powder. I'm going to give it one coat and see what it looks like. I might add more or it might look quite nice a bit patchy if it comes out like that we'll see so there is my little wreath i only want a bit that's going to go in here i quite like the slightly distressed look with little bits of white poking through because there's white poking through there the card is white and it gives it a little bit of texture. It's not too smooth and uniform. So let's have my butterfly here. And I want, I think I might add it to the outside of the frame. So it's gonna come out of the frame a little bit. Like that, and then that will go like that. And I'll pop a little bit of foam tape on all of these leaves and a little bit of glue right on the end. So that is done. I'll see if I can get this lined up easily in one go. So that should go there and that works there, but I don't need foam on those bits. I've got another white paper scrap here and I'm gonna cut this butterfly from it. And I've got a bit of vellum here that I'm gonna cut the shadow out from. So that can go behind him to give him a little bit of solidity. So I want to add a bit of colour to my butterfly body and I think I'll use warm lipstick. Well I am using warm lipstick because it's on the card I stamped one of the circles, the larger stitch circle in warm lipstick but it's not predominant so this should stand out against the background. So he does stand out, but he also ties in. But I want to fade him out a little bit. So I've got a damp baby wipe here, and I'm just gonna go over him a little bit to lighten him. I need to be careful not to saturate the paper. It makes him look a little bit mottled, not too uniform. I'm wondering about putting him in that direction because then we see more of the leaves. If I put him that way, he covers up an awful lot, but I think we get more that way. So to add him here, I'm going to put a bit of 
tacky glue, I think. I'm not going to attach the rest of his wings. I quite like having a little bit of separation so they look as if they're fluttering. And I'm going to cut him a little body from the background so that it all ties together. But I'm, I'm trying to get a bit that hasn't got any gold embossing on it or any stamped stitching. So I think that body will work on there. Make sure that's sticking. I'm going to just give it ever such a little blush of orange from the ink that's just left on my blending brush just to give him a bit more solidity and then I can add this on top of here and you'd never know that they came from separate die sets and now I'm going to put some more glue there and I think pop that there and I'm going to give his head and his body some glossy accents for shine and dimension so he doesn't look flat. I'll take it to the end of the antenna as well. There we go. Now I need to be careful not to stick my finger in there. And these little circles here are just crying out for a nouveau drop each. I think, yeah, that looks about right. And now let's not get this in here. This is my little sentiment folder. And I'm just going to pick a happy birthday. And I'm just thinking, do I want to put it on a little bit of, say, orange, just to give it something to sit on, I think. So I have a bit of dried marigold. Trim that down a little bit. A little bit of glue. I think this is a sentiment that I printed on my inkjet and then cut with my silhouette cameo, if I remember rightly. I'll we'll just trim that out with scissors. I'm not the best at trimming things out with scissors, but Practice makes progress, as they say. And a little bit of foam tape on the back of that. So there you go. That is one birthday card made mostly from white paper scraps. I think the only bits, the only papery bits that weren't scraps were the happy birthday sentiment that I pre-made and pre-cut and the vellum that I used, well that was a ve that was from a scrap but it wasn't a white paper scrap so everything's basically scrap apart from the card blank and the happy birthday. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, hope you like the card and that it's given you some ideas on things you can do with those white paper scraps that you're bound to have floating around your craft room. If you've got ideas of things to do with your white paper scraps then I'd love to hear about it in the comments. You can also come to my Facebook group and share your ideas there. And if you'd like to see more from me, do subscribe and ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.